In this lesson, we're going to talk about vectors. A vector is a set of values of the same data type. And it's usually defined with this function C, which means combine. So combine this set of numbers here, 6, 3, 1, 5, 2, into a vector and put it in this variable here, v1. This operator here is called a, a left arrow in R, and this is how we assign values to a variable in R. In most other languages, you would use an equal sign. In R, we use this left arrow assignment, and you just have to get used to this. If you're new to R, it may look sort of weird at first, eventually you'll become accustomed to it. So combine these numbers here, put it in V1. That's what we're doing on this line of code right here. And in the second line of code, I'm just gonna call that V1 all by itself. And you see what that did is pop the value of V1 up onto the console. And that's a feature of our studio that I really like. You can easily see what's inside one of your variables by just calling that variable. Now, I wouldn't do this normally in a script necessarily, but here in training, um, I do this frequently so that we can see the value of a variable and make sure that it has what we expect. And this next one here, v2, is another vector, but this is a vector of double values, which is a number that has some decimal places. And these two things are different in R. In some languages, you just have numbers. Uh, for instance, in SAS, you just have numeric values. In R, we can distinguish between integers and doubles. And the value of v2 is shown here on the console. And you see the way these vectors come out is, is just one line all sent to the console with this one in front, meaning that this is a single vector. Here's another vector of character values. And you can see those are likewise sent to the console here. I identify characters or strings with quotation marks, just like you would in almost any other language. And here's a vector of dates. Dates in R are actually numbers. They're stored as uh, decimal numbers. And this is days, minutes, and seconds since uh, January 1st, 1970. Internally, that's how they are stored. Externally, they're just shown as dates. And here's an, one more vector, vector of logical values, true-false values, and those are just simply shown as true-false. And so this is just a little survey of vectors and different kinds of vectors that you can create different types of data that you can create. And what distinguishes all these vectors is that every item in each one of these vectors is the same data type, right? So these are all logicals, these are all dates, these are all character strings, and so on. That's what makes a vector a vector, that they all have the same data types. And once you have a vector, you can do some interesting things with it. I'm going to take this vector v1, which was a vector of integer values, and I just want to add 2 to that vector. And what you get is quite interesting, and this is very distinctive of R. What it did when you added 2 to that vector v1. Remember, this had 63152. And now, if I add 2, what R did was essentially loop through that vector, 63152, and add 2 
to each of the items in that vector. So now we have eight, five, three, seven, four, right? So this vector, everything plus two is, um, is actually another vector. It returned another vector with every item incremented by two. And you can do the same thing with multiplication. Now it's six, three, one, five, two. Every one of those vector values multiplied by two, 12, six, two, 10, four. And here in the console, you can sit here and play around with these vectors all you want. And I encourage you to do this when you're learning. Um, it's a great thing to do is just um, play around uh, with vectors here in the console just to sort of get yourself familiar with how these things work. And um, again, this is very distinctive of R. Vectors are an essential feature of R. They're everywhere. And um, it's unlike really any other programming language that I've seen or that I know about. There's probably something similar out there. I haven't encountered it. This is unlike C, it's unlike Java, it's unlike any .NET language, it's unlike SAS, uh, unlike just about anything else I've seen. Here's something else that's distinctive, is in R, there's many functions and they are all vectorized. We call them vectorized functions, meaning that they take a vector as input. So here I'm going to take that same vector of integers and I'm going to send it into this function min. And what it will return is the minimum value in that vector. So remember we had a vector of 63152. The minimum of that vector is one. And so it returned that. Likewise, I could do maximum and my vector up here the maximum value in that vector is six. I have another function here that can tell me the mean of that vector. And I have another function, this one's a little fancier, it can give me quite a few different statistics from that vector, the minimum, the maximum, the mean, the medium, the first quantile, and the third quantile. So this is a nice little function to give you a, a snapshot of your data. There's so many more functions. There's literally tens of thousands of functions. And one useful one is the round function. And you notice what happened here is I sent my vector v2. Remember, that was the one with the double, the double values here. So I send that v2 vector into my round function. And in the second parameter, I said that I wanted that rounded to one decimal place. And so what that did is for each of the values in the V2 vector, it rounded it to one decimal place and then returned another vector with the rounded values. So that's pretty cool. And so many functions in R work like this. They'll essentially loop through each of the items of the vector and return you another vector with the operation that that function was supposed to perform. Another example, and this is quite interesting here, I have this vector v3, and if you remember that had some character values, and here's my vector v1, and this has my numeric values, and what this function does, paste, is string concatenation. And this will concatenate each of the values in V3 to each of the values in V1. So my V3 first item here was A, and it took that and concatenated it, stuck it together with the first item in the V1 vector, which was six, and then C3, and then B1, and D5. And now here's something interesting. In R, if you have vectors that are not equal lengths, it does something called recycling. So here I had five 
values in my v1 vector and only four values in my v3 vector. So it took the first value from v3 and recycled it again onto the last value of v1. And this vector recycling is again uh, very distinctive and a lot of functions will do this. So I have my vector here v1 and what if I don't want this entire vector? Is there some way that I can get a single value out of this vector? And there is what we have in R is called subsetting brackets. And if you type the name of your vector and then do bracket, and then you can take any position of that vector. In this case, I'm going to request the second item in that vector. Then it will return that second item. The second item in my vector is three. And when I did V1 bracket two, I got the value three out of it. Likewise, I could have done any other value. Um, I can get the fifth item. I can get the first item. That's how the subsetting brackets work. I can also send a vector of positions into the subsetting brackets. So here's a little vector that I'm creating kind of on the fly here with that C function two and four. And if I send this vector of positions into the subsetting brackets, what I get back is two items now the second item and the fourth item, which has the values of three and five. So if you remember my vector up here, here's the second item and here's the fourth item. And that gets returned as a vector of two items. Now we get even a little bit more wild. If you remember, I had a vector of true and false values up here. Um, and what happens if I send that vector of true and false values into my vector v1? Well, for every true value, it will return that item, and for every false value, it will not. So in this case, I had three trues, and so it returned the first item, the third item, and the fourth item from that vector, which gives me the values back six, one, and five. You will definitely want to play around with these vectors. I would spend at least a half an hour playing around with vectors. You can add, subtract, multiply, uh, statistical functions, um, play around with the subsetting, um, basically anything you can think of. It's um, very good to become familiar with the way these things work. One final thing you can do is you can not only retrieve items using the subset operators, you can also assign items using the subset operators. So you remember my V1 here has these values in it, 63152. If I then want to assign a different value to position number two, what I can do is just set up my subset brackets on position number two, and then remember that left arrow assignment, assign the value of nine to the second position of my vector V1. And so what happens when I do that? You can see before that I had the value of three in the second position. I now have the value nine in that second position, and everything else is the same. It's the same vector, just that now I have a nine here instead of a three. Just a quick recap here. A vector is a set of values of the same data type. Vectors are everywhere in R. Most functions in R are vectorized and very frequently those vectors will be used as input and sometimes even output of those functions. And what I suggest you do is create some vectors and then practice playing around with them. Uh, using some vectorized functions, you can practice your subsetting 
and just get to know how these things work.